Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 51. It's on the work energy principle. But before we get to that, we should define both work and energy. What is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. That doesn't help much. What is the energy we're going to be talking about in this video? It's going to be kinetic energy. So that's energy, energy due to motion. And to figure that out, remember it's one half mv squared, where m is the mass and v is the velocity of the object. If the object's bigger, if it's faster, it's going to have more kinetic energy. Now what's work? Work is simply a force times a distance. So applying a force for a given amount of distance. And so what's neat is that these two are equivalent. They're always going to be equal. And so if you need to calculate the kinetic energy, a really good way to do it is to simply calculate the work. And so if we're looking at a baseball as it's moving, it clearly has kinetic energy. Where did it come from? It came from work of the pitcher. So the pitcher is applying a force to that baseball over a given distance. And the amount of that work is going to be equivalent to the amount of energy that's given to that baseball. And so there's equivalence between these two. So let's start with work. So let's say we're applying a force to this object right here. So we're going to apply a constant force to the right. And then we're going to move it a given distance. And so watch what happens. You can see it started at rest and it's accelerating. I just stopped the simulation right here. And so we applied a constant force over a given distance and so we did work. Now what's neat is that's equivalent to the amount of energy that was given to that object. This object now has kinetic energy. Now if we wanted to figure out that kinetic energy, we could break it down into the final kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared minus the initial um, kinetic energy. But what's neat is if we just know the force and the distance, we've already figured out the amount of kinetic energy that's being added. Now let's work qualitatively for a second. Have we added energy to that object or have we taken it away? Well, since we applied a force to the right over a given distance, we know that the work is going to be a positive value. How else could we figure this out? Well, if we look at its initial kinetic energy, since it had a velocity of zero, then we know that this is a zero value. And if we're taking a value of a velocity minus a zero value, we know this is going to be a positive value. And so you can look at either the force and that where the force is being uh, added over time or the change in the velocity. And that's going to tell you is energy being added or is it being taken away? Let's look at a different scenario. Now we have an object that's moving towards the right. And so when I start it, it's going to be moving towards the right. But let's say we're applying a net force to the left. What's going to happen here? you can see it's going to slow down. And so what's happening to the amount of work? Well, we've got a negative force times the distance, and so we're decreasing the amount of kinetic energy in that object. We're taking that energy away, which makes sense because the object is coming to rest. If we wanted to look at the velocities, we could see now that we have a final velocity of zero, so this is a zero value right here, minus that initial velocity, and so you can see that we're going to have a negative energy. We've lost energy. We've lost kinetic energy. Now it's not as simple as that, because sometimes you're going to apply a force and it's not going to be in the same direction as the motion. And so let's say we're pulling on that object. So you could say we have a rope tied onto it, and we're moving it in that direction. Okay, now, since we've moved it in that direction, we have to break down that force vector into its two component vectors. We have this, we'll call that the force parallel, so it's in the direction of the motion, and then we have this, which is going to be the force perpendicular. Now, what's interesting is that it's only this force that's acting in the direction of that motion. And therefore, it's only that force that is doing work. The other force is not doing any work since the motion is not in that direction. And so lots of times when you're solving problems, it's not as simple as figuring out the work. You have to break that force down into its component force. And I'll show you an example of that. And so let's start simple. Let's say we have a cart, and that cart is moving from the left to the right, and we're applying a constant force of 7.1 newtons. So how would you figure out the work on that cart? It's really simple. You just say work is equal to the force parallel. Again, it's going to be in the direction of that motion times the distance. And since we're given a force of 7.1 newtons times a distance of 0.18 meters, it's really simple to solve for that. So what's going to be our work? It's simply going to be 1.3 joules. 
Now that's the amount of work that was done on the cart. What's neat is it also shows us the amount of kinetic energy that was added to that cart. We don't have to figure out the mass and the velocity and initial velocity. We know by the amount of work being applied to it that that's going to tell us the amount of kinetic energy added. Let's look at a cart that's already moving towards the right. But we're applying a net force to the left and watch what happens here. Again, it's slowing down. So how do you figure out the amount of work on that? Well, again, it's force parallel. In this case, it's anti-parallel. It's in the opposite direction. And so we have to put that in as a negative value. And so we're going to have negative 0.93 joules. In other words, we're taking energy away. We're doing negative work on that object. Now let's move that force in a different direction. This makes the problem a little bit harder. You can always pause the video and try to work this out. But let's say we're applying a 9.6 Newton force in this direction, but it's 32 degrees up from parallel. And watch what happens to that object. So it's moving in that direction. So if I want to figure out the amount of energy that's added to that cart, all I have to do is figure out the force, force parallel times the distance. What makes this problem a little bit harder, remember, is that we have to target this, which is going to be that force in the parallel direction. How do we do that? Well, we just use a little bit of trigonometry. Since you know this angle and you know the hypotenuse, we can figure out this adjacent. And so to figure out that, it's simply going to be the force times the distance times cosine of theta. What is cosine of theta? It's the cosine of this angle right here. And so that's going to give me a force, and I can always check that. It should be a value that's going to be less than the hypotenuse or less than 9.6 newtons. So if I plug that in my calculator, I can find the cosine of 32, and the cosine of 32 is 0.848. So it's decreasing amount, that amount of force, but it's the force that is actually moving in the direction of that motion. And so now I just simply add or multiply all those values, and I get 1.5 joules. Again, I'm solving for significant digits here. And so how much work is done on the cart? 1.5 joules. How much energy has been added to the cart? 1.5 joules. And so you know there's that equivalence. The amount of work done on that cart is equal to the amount of energy that that cart has gained, which is kinetic energy minus initial energy. And so if you wanted to, if you're given the mass of the object, you could plug that in. Since that object is accelerating, we could say that its initial velocity is zero. And so you could figure out its final velocity. And so again, work and energy are going to be equivalent. How did it get the energy? we applied a certain amount of force over a given distance. And so did you learn to make predictions about the changes in kinetic energy of an object? Again, if it's moving faster, it's going to have a higher amount of kinetic energy. Can you use the force and the velocity to just qualitatively figure out, are we adding energy or are we taking it away? And then finally, can you figure out the amount of work on an object and therefore the amount of energy that's being added to the object? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.